Okay, so today's presentation is about Geo, and uh, at first I would like to ask uh, who of you somehow worked before with some Geo projects, maybe, I don't know, uh, geolocation or whatever. Okay, so I think I think a few, and but that's generally fine. But uh, so what? What I want to say that uh, probably uh, you maybe even haven't for thought before that you worked with geodata, but you had. I I, I really think so because uh, I think a lot of you are using like engines, and uh, they and you have geo binding to your country in your engines log, for example. So it's also somehow related to geostate and. Also, if you're using Google Analytics, you also uh, have the information about your visitors from uh, from different countries. So it's also somehow but binding to Geo. So in practice, you all of you know why it uh, why it's so important uh, to know this Geo data and probably how to use it. So uh, my name is Vessel. I am working in a company called Django Stars, and uh, there we are working a bit with uh, Geo. So Today I would like to share with you my experience and what I know about that. So if you will have any questions uh, during the presentation, you can just raise your hand and we'll quickly discuss it or you can leave it afterwards and we will discuss this after presentation or in the question session. Okay, so for those of you who have computer but have some difficulties watching this presentation, you can go on this URL and find this presentation online. So. It's present on GitHub pages, so it's uh, maybe more easy for you to read from your laptop. Okay, so uh, I, I suppose this presentation won't be so boring because uh, in general talking about something new and especially about Geo uh, requires a lot of terminology. So I, at the beginning I will start with the boring part and uh, maybe in, in the middle we'll uh, answer question, where is Python here? And uh, give some real examples and evidence that Python is really good for, for geo development. So in general, we'll go through some concepts of uh, geo spatial data and uh, how we can use them. Talk a bit about location, distance and units, projections and coordinate systems that are like uh, key concepts in uh, geo development. Also, we'll talk about GEOs, uh, uh, about GIS data formats, about storing and analyze, analyzing geodata, and uh, about libraries and applications that are ready for use and you can use on your projects, which are essentially built in Python, and about other data sources that you can grab some geodata and use it in your applications. Okay, so maybe this map is not very nice, but it shows us that uh, nowadays maps became a bit different from that you originally saw during, for example, our school studies, when you saw like Atlas with uh, some map. Today maps can be quite different. They have different colors. They can be binded on some regions uh, that uh, have some special meaning and representation. For example, here colors indicate the population of different regions and how it is grown in time. And on the right side, there is a small map. I can consider that is also a map, but shows just only some part of roads, which is also maybe quite useful in some cases. Okay, this map represents some informations uh, described in points and clusters. So by looking at this, you can make some, uh, some assumptions about what can be present here. So for example, uh, there is a lot of applications uh, that shows a crime on some regions. So, uh, based on that, uh, on, the, on that kind of map, you can just, uh, in one shot, just be sure what region is good for living and what is not. For example, there is crime maps, and there is every block applications that uh, use the same concept, and uh, they are really awesome. So, you can exactly determine how many crimes there in some regions, and by that you can choose whatever you like, leave it there or not. Okay, so boring part. I think everybody knows what location is, but in general it's, it somehow identifies where you're now in some coordinate system. So the most common way is uh, to put X and Y coordinates, and in that way you definitely uh, can locate something on, on the surface or on the uh, sphere, which is our Earth, is. 
Okay, when we are talking about geometries and uh, and geostate, the uh, also the very important concept is about distance, and everybody knows what the distance is. So, for example, you can calculate your distance to your to your friend, which is sitting near for you, and uh, to the, you can calculate distance uh, from your home to your work, and uh, vice versa. So, it's very obvious that it's quite useful. And uh, in general, difference can, distance can be developed, can be merged in two ways. Uh, the first is an angular distance, where you can uh, determine the degrees between two objects. So, in sense of Earth, it's quite important because you can you can don't have exact distance in meters or some other units, but you can have you can show this angle between two objects. And the more real world distance, it's about linear distance. So you can just say that. Hey, my friend is sitting in the five meters near from me, and uh, I, I have to uh, go on, on a bus for five kilometers from my home to work. And uh, talking about uh, geodata, also we uh, somehow back to our standards. So uh, when we store objects about ge geo uh, data, they in most kinds of in most ways they are represented in some standard formats and. One of these formats is WKT and WKB, which we mentioned before. There is also quite popular standard and format for storing geodata called GeoJSON. Like the de facto standard, we can consider that shape files is a, def is a quite popular standard. So in general, it's a combination of few files and you can store there uh, your geodata and also related spatial data, data to that. And uh, there is another standards, but we can just continue. So in general, each every standard that we have uh, and uh, file formats that we have we can, uh, can be bite into two formats. The first format is about vector data. So uh, formats like shapefiles, files, well-known text, GeoSS, and KML, they handle this uh, vector data. And there is raster data, which, is, which already represent uh, rendered images. For, for some of your locations and some zooms. And so talking about raster data, we can say that quite popular formats there are GeoTIFF and GeoPDF. And um, for example, if we want to look sub about some use cases where this GeoPDF can be used, uh, for those of you who have uh, Kindle, there is a lot of applications uh, for working with maps. And uh, inside of them, they're using G GeoPDF for storing this uh, uh, this raster image for some location, for example, for Kiev, and uh, you, it, it can be stored, for example, in one, in one file, <coughs> and you can easily zoom in and zoom out on this file or using your application, which is, uh, I think, quite good because you don't need to render somehow these images, but they already pre render it, and you can just zoom in and zoom out there. And do not download it each time, like it uh, works with Google or cache it somehow, it's always with you. Talking about geo objects, uh, they are important itself because uh, you can uh, somehow answer questions about these objects and uh, how they relate to each other. For example, uh, having two geo objects, like two polygons, you can find intersection between these objects, what the difference, union, centroid, buffer, and there's quite a lot more uh, operations that can be done. Also, we can answer the question about uh, some state of this uh, of these objects. So you can uh, say, does this object is within another object, or does they in intersect which are which is each other, or uh, crosses, or touches, or whatever. There's quite a lot of uh, such queries and, can, and what objects can relate between each other. In, develop, in common develop and developers' world, uh, we not always use this, uh, all this stuff. So in most cases, when you build application, you want just to find objects that are nearest to some point. So like to find the nearest sushi bars to your location. You can uh, also, the second most popular question is, for example, you have some location like uh, key region, and you want to, to know how many people, for example, live there. It's like one query. So n having the, uh, this bounding box of this geometry of your city and having a point of uh, each person which lives here, you can just say 
hey, give me all the information about users that are in this geometry or in this boundary box. And uh, the third uh, question, which is also quite useful and uh, which, uh, which, is, which can be as asked, it's about that you have a lot of layers and uh, some geometries somehow crosses each other. For example, you have a big, a big uh, polygon which contains key region. Inside this key region, you have geometry with park, and the si inside this geometry with park, you have a building. So uh, when you ask a question, you put a point on this building, and want, you want to get all the layers uh, that above it, and uh, it's uh, obviously can be done with geo queries and geo data. So this is the third question. So, so uh, storages and analysis. Um, each uh, here we'll briefly talk about special indexes, about uh, that how geo files can be a storages itself. Uh, we'll also briefly just go through some special databases and show some examples and evidence uh, how it works in Python. And uh, I also would like to briefly mention about how we can store and query uh, language using uh, search engines. Talking about indexes, uh, we might consider the fact when we are dealing with one location, it's obvious that you have all the information about this location and uh, there is quite not a lot of uh, operations that you, that you can do with it. But when you, for example, have a set of locations like you have data from OpenStreetMap. There is like uh, two million of objects, point of interest for Ukraine. So uh, dealing with this data, with this data can be quite complicated, and uh, you should uh, find some efficient way how to do that. So in most cases, all of the apl applications and databases they have ability to create indexes for this data, so it, it will force uh, and speed uh, searching and working with this, with this geo data. So there's, there is considered two main uh, type of indexes. One type is called R3. It's, uh, it's good for all the, uh, all the geo data that you have for both polygons, points, uh, multi-polygons, whatever. And so there is Quad3 that performs well with points. So. Uh, when we're talking, for example, about databases itself and about Postgres, which is also very popular in, in Geo world, uh, this uh, R3 is exactly the index which is used for it. Uh, in, in Python world, and maybe not in Python, but in uh, Geo world, there is already done libraries that uh, people use and uh, that mathematically that they provide all the operations that you can do and perform on some geo data. So all this is done and done mostly with C. Oh, sorry. So uh, the most important dependencies that you probably need to install during your development with geo data it's uh, Google. It's uh, part of Google is OG, ORG. It's uh, like. Some people called it Swiss Army knife for working with geo data. So with it, you can take your data, convert it to different formats, open it, and do whatever you want. So uh, actually, this uh, library is used uh, behind uh, behind the scenes if you want to convert your uh, data your data from OpenStreetMap to PostgreSQL or Shapefile or whatever. So the second most important dependency is geos. So thanks to this library, you can uh, provide some geo operations between your objects, like uh, check uh, does objects crosses each other or does one object contains each other uh, contains another. And uh, Proj4 it's uh, a library which uh, provides you a way and gives you ability to convert information between uh, different. Uh, projections. So, for example, you have projection, you have data in one projections, like with uh, degrees, and you would want to convert it to meters. And uh, thanks to this library, you can uh, you can do that. And uh, thus, all of them are built, uh, and uh, internally they are built with C. Uh, each of this library have its Python bindings, so for us, it's easy to work with them. 
Okay, so we will go to the database part and uh, just briefly to say there is a lot of databases that support storing and working with the geospatial data and uh, the, most, uh, uh, the most popular and most feature rich of them is uh, PostGIS. So there is also, also special light. Uh, it's a SQL light database that gives you ability to work with this geodata. MySQL have in, has inside uh, uh, objects and uh, can store and work with geodata. Oracle, MS SQL, and uh, I put it here MongoDB. So I think it's, it's becoming a po more popular and popular, and uh, it also have uh, some instruments how to, you, can, you can work with geodata, and I will show this an example. Okay, so PostgreSQL is, as I said, it's the most important and uh, the most feature-rich uh, database, and, uh, but it's not itself w work with geodata, so actually it has some built-in types, like for points and etc. but uh, when, we, uh, when we want to perform a different kind of operations, it actually requires installing some extensions, extension called PostGIS, and uh, here's a funny image. I don't know if is it funny or not, but uh, when you add uh, some geo part, you will get this pages there. Uh, also, uh, I want to say a few words about uh, storages. So for now, storages are becoming not like, uh, like dealing with databases itself. So there is a lot of application and services that gives you ability to, to serve this data outside of your application and uh, all of you want is just concentrate on your applications but don't deal with all this uh, backend and administrative part and uh, CartoDB is one of such, uh, such services. It's both uh, paid service and open source applications so uh, behind the scenes uh, it, it uses PostgreSQL but uh, you can install it on your local machine also or your server and use all the features there. Uh, so you don't need to, to deal with all complex queries there. It have a API there you can just ask, uh, show me the nearest objects and it will do that for you. Okay, here's an example with uh, how we can deal with Python and uh, PostgreSQL. So at last, we, we got to the Python path. So as you see, uh, the syntax is quite clear and obvious, so you, just, uh, you can just work with, the, with standard uh, CPG to module and uh, just perform a simple query that will gives you all the nearest distance in uh, radius of 10 kilometers to, to some point. And here we use just uh, this d within function which is, uh, uh, which is inside of PostGIS. But today nobody, nobody writes actually SQL queries and everybody uses ORM for that. So uh, there is plenty of them but Talking about work, about geodata, we can say that there is not such such a lot of them. So, but people still love it. So, about those who use Django, you can use Django RAM for dealing with geospatial data, and all these features are built in and uh, uh, works quite well. So, here's an example of a very simple model where you defined uh, geo applications with person and uh, in the bottom which you see it's uh, what's the difference between the standard Django model and uh, what we need for dealing with geodata is that you know, there is special type of field called, called point field there is different types for another type for another geometries like line string etc and uh, all these queries can be performed using special uh, manager, which is called Geo Manager, which is also built in Python uh, in Django. And uh, here is a real example of this query. So, using just one line, you can do the same, which I previously showed you in uh, in PostgreSQL. So you can find some uh, some all the people that are nearest to some point in radius of 10 kilometers. For those of you who don't like Django for some reasons, or just it doesn't suit your needs, you can just use uh, Geo uh, Alchemy, which uh, also works fine with the Geo data and uh, gives you ability to to make queries and in the same way, almost in the same way, which is done in, in Django. 
Previously, I mentioned a bit that uh, some search engines and uh, can be uh, well done for geodata also, but uh, they are not so feature rich. But if your application is like Foursquare and you you just want to show for user nearest objects to, the, to it, uh, to him. So Solar, for example, performs well here, and you can just combine a simple query. You can add the parameter which uh, which will uh, ask what the format here, and uh, for example, by specifying the format of output, you can just say, "Hey, return me all that in JSON." And uh, in Python, it's quite easy how to use, how to convert JSON to to native objects. And uh, both Solar and Elasticsearch provide such abilities. So uh, if uh, in some in some case you'll have applications uh, I described in this case, you can easily use it, and about talking about speed, they also performs very well. About MongoDB, so uh, MongoDB is becoming popular and popular, and all the people tries to use it, and uh, finds a lot of magic there, and uh, they say, wow, it's, it's boosting my application, and it's at us 10x speed, and uh, MongoDB also tries uh, to play somehow uh, a bit with Geodata, so uh, you can just uh, define not also a lot of features there, and there's not a lot of them, but by uh, if you're working with the same use case that I said before, for example, you have just a point and should find some nearest objects, it also performs well. So using a near function, you can, you can get all the nearest objects in some radius. Okay, so uh, after we had talked so much about uh, about these databases and uh, all the behind stuff, we can continue working with Python. And uh, talking about Python and GeoState, uh, there is a lot of applications uh, and a lot of modules that are already built and you can easily use them and uh, uh, I think they are really awesome. So uh, actually, in general, these models can be uh, generalized as some extensions to to functions uh, and to the dependencies that I mentioned before, like uh, OSGO Google is uh, considered like uh, extensions uh, about the Google itself. Shapely is uh, is a good, well, good very good extensions uh, on the Geos uh, library, and uh, using it, you can perform these uh, operations between objects. Uh, GeoJenga itself. Uh, it's also contained the uh, Python bindings to both Google, uh, Proj, uh, and uh, Geos. R3 is a module for dealing with the special index itself, so I think it's a bit upper level. So if you want to build your own index on your data that you have without, for example, storing or dealing with the database, you can easily use it. Uh, PyProj work with projections. Mapnik is is also as is also generally built on C++, but uh, it's a library for for creating maps from your data. So it's uh, more about cartography. And Mapfish is uh, is a geo model for pylons. And geo -alch uh, alchemy, I already mentioned, it's ORM for for working with geo data. And uh, that's not a, that was not a full list, so uh, by searching for classifier and PyPy, Py, Py, you can just uh, get a lot of applications that uh, consider to be working with, uh, with geodata. So some real example with uh, Google. So uh, here we're just opening the, uh, some file with uh, rods. With, this is a data which I downloaded from OpenStreetMap. So I highlighted the most important parts that I think, and uh, you will see that here we try to get uh, the count of objects that we have in this layer. And uh, we took one specific object, since object inside, uh, try to get all the keys, so to represent the information which is inside this object, and uh, try to export this data to, to more readable format for humans. It's, uh, in this case, it's try to convert to GeoJSON. So what we get from that, uh, like for, for roads, we have information about 22,724 roads in Ukraine. Uh, here's the highlighted the keys that we have in this object. It's uh, awesome ID, name, reference system, type, uh, one way, and max speed. So uh, 
not of not all of this uh, data is actually present uh, on this by these keys, but in some cases there could be information. And uh, the third part that we had, it's like export to GeoJSON. So you'll see that here we have a geometry for this uh, for this piece of road. It's for in our case just two points, so it's a one shot line. And uh, all the separate information that we have in our case, it's uh, what we see here, it's type of this road is a footway, and uh, we have OSM ID for this object. Shapely. So in Shapely, uh, example which we had here, we just uh, combined a few polygons and uh, tried to show a cascade union of this. So, uh, and then show the WKT representation, which also I mentioned before, it's, it's really to, to read. So here is WKT representation of this object. I, th I didn't put all this, uh, all the output here because it was too long, but in general we can see that this is a tuple of uh, tuples actually inside. And so this is uh, the, uh, that how we actually represent these uh, geometries before the, our cascade unit and what the geometry was in, in the end of this operation. And also uh, about uh, Shapely, well, there is an easy way to get some uh, geometry properties. So in our case, we can uh, return the area of this uh, final geometry. Uh, we can get bounding box, which is... Uh, also well-known well uh, part of in Geo world. So actually, if you want you know, to get some box, uh, and it box should uh, have inside some geometry, so this minimum box that can hold, hold this geometry is called bounding box. And so we can get uh, also double KT representation of this bounded box geometry. Talking about Mapnik and about cartography, uh, I, I would like to say that uh, it's really a hard job. So for those of you who have already dealt with uh, with cartography or rendering maps with uh, Mapnik uh, should know about that. So uh, the problem is in that on different layer of your map, you want to show or hide some information. So uh, for example, if you are on the first level of uh, your map, which is like a world map, uh, it's you don't need at all to show, for example, buildings or roads, some small roads. So that's why uh, writing such rulers for for your, for that how your map should look like may be a real pain. But uh, also there is applications that can help you. So uh, maybe you already heard about tile mill. So in tile mill, uh, you can create custom styles for your map uh, using character language. It's uh, it, it have it has similar to CSS syntax, and uh, by creating a map there, you can just export this uh, to Mapnik XML file and load it once and generate all the maps you need. So in this case, I created a very simple map. I just uh, created the style for map, created some rulers that are responsible for this styling on different, different levels, and uh, add some symbolizer with some colors. In our case, it's, uh, we have background color of map, which is white and uh, black color of our line symbolizer, so all the lines that we have in our map will be in black, and uh, just deal with appending this, uh, these styles to our layer. Okay, so uh, the next most important part, the part so that Mapnik itself can work with different geodata, so you can not only work with shape files, but you can say that uh, I have a PostgreSQL database and you can in your data source, defined access to a PostgreSQL, defined a table where you should get the data about uh, geometries, or just perform some query and to also generate for you images. And let's see what will be in as a result. So this is the map of all all the roads that we have in that files. Maybe it's ugly, but for those of you who are from Ukraine, it's easy to see that it's it's really Ukraine, so it works. Also, I included uh, some uh, some applications and modules that I didn't mention before, but I think that they are worth to be mentioned, and they are also quite use useful in Django world, and obviously they are also built in Python. So, in among, so among of these objects, uh, modules, sorry, there is Tile Stash, which is Python-based uh, server application that can serve and generate your tiles and cache them. There is Tile Lite, which actually does the same, 
And uh, there is one of my, my favorite applications, which is called MapProxy. It's, uh, also, uh, uh, it's also an application for generating tiles and uh, caching them. So uh, MapProxy is good for that. Uh, you can define there some MapNIC uh, data or whatever, and uh, it will pre-generate uh, pre -generate data for you. It's called seeding, for example, and uh, you can get all the tiles that you need on your local machine. And QGIS is a desktop application. Uh, there you can work with spatial data. It's also quite feature rich, and you can write uh, whatever you want there using Python. So let's imagine that you already want to build some geo application and you want some data. So uh, it, if, you, if you want to work with some existing data, you can find the next uh, list of data sources quite useful for you. So uh, I, I think one of the most important and uh, uh, freely available open source, uh, <coughs> open database, open data source is like OSM itself. So there is quite a lot of data and there is like uh, more than 200 gigabytes of uh, database. And there is Geofabric where you can get some slice of this data or data only related to some country. Uh, data.gov can represent a lot of geo-information for you, and uh, there is another country, another companies that also can provide some slice or inf in geo-information. Uh, they are like CloudMate, Gislab, and Factual that also have an API for getting special information. Okay, so here is a page where I want to thank you some about that uh, some guys and about that I used for this presentation. So especially I used some ideas that Paul Smith uh, had been mentioned on this year presentation in Santa Clara and PyCon. And okay, there is no, I, I can't switch to the last slide, but there is thank you page and I'm ready for, for questions. Thank you guys.